Hello everyone, welcome to the Melt FX uh, smoke simulation tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a smoke sim that we'll, we will use to melt this geometry into a uh, smoke-like effect. And the first thing we're going to do is we need to convert this geometry here into a volume. And right now we have, uh, it's a high-res mesh and has about 1.1 1 .1 points, uh, million points. So we need to convert that into a volume for us to be able to use it. And we're going to use a VDB from Polygon to convert this one. So I'm going to connect that. And right now it's creating a uh, what we call an SDF, and we don't want that. We need a density. We want to convert this to a volume with just density in it. And I'm going to lower the resolution to be uh, a bit higher. And we have about 245. So this, this should be good. And the other thing I'm going to do is I want to fill in the interior. I don't want it to uh, have empty interior. And um, we've done that by taking the fill interior. The next thing I wanted to do at this point, uh, we're not gonna use this right away, but we'll, we will use it later when we do the render time displacement in Arnold. And I would like to expand expand the boundaries a little bit so we, in case we needed to sample from outside this uh, data, this area here, we won't have issues. So I'm gonna put down a VDB activate. Uh, the name is a little bit uh, confusing for this node, but it does allow us to expand the volume. So if we drop that, a node and go under expand and expand this by let's say 20 20 voxels that should be enough for us to do the um, render time displacement and then the next thing i want to do is i want to increase the density right now it's a little bit uh, uh, too opaque and too transparent and i'm going to increase that so i'm going to put down a volume wrangle and we're going to multiply the density by 100 so f a uh, density uh, multiply equal by 100 and basically this is a shortcut for instead of typing this f density equal f density multiply by 100 we can simply um, avoid the duplication of the attribute here and just put the operation before the equal sign so we have we've multiplied the volume by 100 now cool so uh, i'm going to save this to disk and we're going to save it into a VDB file. I'm going to save it as with the .vdb extension. In case later I decided to render this with Arnold, I can use the this file directly with the Arnold volume procedural that reads a VDB. If I use the .geo extension, we won't be able to use this with the procedural, and uh, we won't be losing any feature if we use this format. So I'm gonna uh, use the this path and use the .vdb extension. Cool, so once we have that, I'm gonna save it to disk and I'm gonna read it back in. And I just wanted to separate this as uh, basically prepping of the data. So I'm gonna put down a sticky and I'm gonna call this data prep. And this is where we prepare the whatever sources, sources we have. And now we have the VDB volume that we wrote out and I'm going to use this with a smoke solver. So I'm gonna create a dot network and we're gonna call this a smoke sim and I'm gonna create a null and this is going to be my out source or out volume source. Let's do this. Cool, so uh, some of you guys may, may be wondering why I didn't use the fluid source node and the reason for that is because we don't need any of these features. We have, if I middle click here, we have a field called density and it's just a float field. And that's all we care about, that's all we need. And um, we can simply use this right away in the smoke sim. So I'm gonna dive inside, I don't need this node. I'm gonna create a smoke solver and we're gonna create a uh, smoke object. And we're gonna create a volume source. So these are my uh, three inputs that we're going to be using. And we're going to create a gravity. I'm going to create a ground. And it should be at zero, zero. That's good. So I'm going to connect all these. So the smoke object goes in the, the first input. The source goes into the last one. And then we're going to put down a merge and connect the ground. Co 
connect the merge into the solver and then the gravity node. It's very important to um, set the relationship in the merge node to left input inputs affect right inputs and you connect first the, the ground and you can see the order here. So this, this solver will be interacting with this. And now um, we come to the um, setting up the smoke object and I have the uh, domain that I know will work. We'll just cover the basically where the uh, the bear is, and I'm gonna set these value from from a previous scene. And this is going to move it so that it's correctly placed. Cool. So uh, this is our domain, and we're not gonna change anything. We're just gonna source the smoke so out volume source and now if we look at the solver and hit play we should see the bear cool so now we have continuous emission from that geo and as you can see the resolution is really low and it's not because of the source it's because of the division on uh, in here so i'm going to change that to 0.1 you can see we have continuous emission and it's falling down because of the because of the gravity so actually I'm going to turn this off for now. Uh, I want the smoke to um, fall down without any gravity and we're going to use the uh, the buoyancy for that. And let's see, so we have our emission and we don't want it to be continuous. So right now we're adding, temper we're adding the density field every frame and we don't want that um, to be the case. We want it just to emit Two, for two frames and then disappear. So we're going to use the dollar $f less than uh, a specific frame, and in this case, a dollar $f uh, less than three, and that means it's going to be active for two frames, and that's when we're going to emit that exact smoke, and then it's going to stop emitting. And now we need to get the, uh, the basically the dissipation effect. And the reason I didn't want the to use the gravity is because if we use the buoyancy and get the fluid to go downward, it will create much more realistic movement. It will create a lot of nice swirls uh, that we won't be able to achieve with uh, just the gravity. The gravity will just cause the volume to fall straight down. So actually, let's plug this back in and see. So you can see it just disappeared and it, there isn't a lot of interesting movement and I'm not going to use the gravity I'm going to use something else that will also have uh, more advantage for us later to be able to shade the volumes in a different way and what we're what uh, we're going to use is we're going to use the temperature field and right now the buoyancy is set to five and yet with this value we we are not getting any lifting the volume the the density is not going upward and the reason for that is because the buoyancy lifting uses the temperature <coughs> pardon me uses the temperature and right now we don't have any temperature field if we go back to the source you can see we have only density and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put down a name attribute and we want to create a temperature field that is uh, equal to the de density itself exactly a copy of the density so i'm going to set the group here i'm going to say name is equal density at this point and it's from we want to change it from density to temperature and that's all we need to do and if we look at the name now we should see it called temperature and if we take this and merge it if we merge it back uh, we're gonna see both of them but that's not a problem we can put down a visibility node and and hide this so now we only see the density and now if we go back and play the sim, it's going to rise, it's going to go, to go up. And the reason for that is because we added the temperature. And right now at uh, a buoyancy of 5, it's going up this much, this high. So if we flip this to minus 5, it's going to push it down. Okay? And uh, this, is, this creates a much more realistic movement compared to the, to the gravity that forces everything just down this is much more realistic so we're going to go with that approach and all what i'm going to do is i'm going to animate this value here so i'm going to set it to zero at the first frame i don't want it to be um, i don't want any anything to happen to the volume for 21 
24 frames. And then um, at 24 frames, we're going to set it to minus uh, 0.1. And that's when the dissipation, the, the dissipation will start happening. Sorry, the, the melting will start happening. And then towards frame 48, we're going to increase it to, let's say, minus 1. And then toward frame 96, uh, these are a previous value that I tweaked. So I'm trying to uh, put back the same values, I'm just animating the points here. So, so if I hit play, it stays still and then slowly start dissipating. And that's how we get the, uh, the buoyancy effect. Now, in the next video, we're going to be adding more uh, turbulence and tweaking, uh, tweak the values a little bit more so we get more details and create something more realistic. Thank you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.